Welcome back to Big Shoulders, the civic technology webcast. Um, I have with me today Rajiv Chopra, and uh, he is the founder of the MIS department, uh, but he took a little bit of a leave of absence to do uh, what I sort of consider is the coolest seasonal job there is. And I'm not talking about the holiday season, I'm talking about the campaign season, right? So Rajiv was the CIO for the Obama for America campaign, and in the first Obama for America campaign, you were the National Director of IT. Welcome. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Tell me about your experience uh, as CIO and National Director of IT. Sure. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a leave of absence to, to go join the campaign. Um, it was uh, something that happened without any intent of it being you know, a, a career move. It was rather just uh, a buddy of mine being on the phone and uh, discussing uh, Senator Obama's announcement that he's uh, you know coming for the presidency, and we literally said to each other, "There's no chance he wins, but this is the ship I want to go down with." And uh, we ended up you know emailing and signing up online and doing all the rest to try to get involved, uh, and uh, finally got someone to pay attention to us enough to to let us uh, uh, interview, and then volunteered to work uh, you know doing IT work, helping with some of the migration issues they were having in the back end for email. Uh, doing like you know printer hookups and whatnot, going out to the field and just helping with wireless networks and the simplest stuff, and that snowballed into a like a continuous you know like oh I could go another week, I'd go another week, maybe I could do another couple weeks on the road. The next thing you know, it had been months that I'd been away from home and uh, and away from your business and away from my business, uh, yeah, with customers um, you know being extraordinarily kind uh, in allowing projects to go on long term pause. Um, until finally the campaign offered me a job, which which coincided nicely with the end of my savings, so it, that worked out okay. <laughs> and that was that was the big, that was in the first campaign. Yes. That was the first campaign. Yes. Okay. yes. And so when when I think of when I think of the reasons why you did that, I think that uh, working in campaigns in this capacity is is kind of like the ultimate form of civic engagement, right? You want to be uh, part of the democratic process in a deep and meaningful way, so you made some sacrifices to make that happen. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, it's uh, um, there's like I used to think of myself as fairly political because I had opinions and I argued with people in bars, uh, and I, and I think that's great. That's that's, right. that's good. That's getting a part of the job done. Um, but but getting involved in the campaign uh, because I cared about particular candidates and particular issues, and being able to bring like you know IT the the, the sort of thing I do in my regular professional life in uh, was a much more satisfying experience. And I, I think like everybody would be well served to at least once in their life. Um, connect with an issue that like touches society at that scale. It doesn't have to be a presidential campaign. It could be you know you're into you know the, the you know, alleviation of debt in Africa or what, whatever topic happens to get you out of bed. Um, but you know let it lead you to to a slightly different path at some point because it's 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 just so much more gratifying. Well, you, there must be a lot of people who felt that way as well because I re actually I remember the day that I met you was. Um, at a Tech for Obama uh, sort of advisory meeting, mm -hmm. and I walked into the campaign headquarters, and there was just rows and rows of tables, and it went across this big room, and there were rows and rows of people, each on their computers, doing some sort of tech stuff mm -hmm. for the campaign. Mm -hmm. So that, that obviously resonates. It does, uh, and uh, that's what uh, kind of made 08 a, a, a better experience than, than, than 12 in many ways, uh, because it being, you know, him being more of a long shot, it was simply people who the cause resonated with that showed up. Um, there were very few who came because they wanted to make a name for themselves in uh, democratic politics, because those people all worked for, you know, the first tier choice or the second tier choice. At that point, Barack Obama was nowhere on the list of, of likely uh, candidates. So yeah, we got we got a huge crew of very dedicated, wonderfully talented people uh, who showed up to not be in each other's way, just to try to see something bigger than themselves happen. And they had a skill set that they oh, yeah. wanted to uh, that they wanted to put forth on it, and that was their uh, way of engaging mm -hmm. in in the democratic process for a, uh, for a, a candidate that they believed in. On that topic. Tell me a little bit about the differences between the two campaigns. You had mentioned that that one, the 2008 campaign, was potentially a little bit more exciting. Uh, and you were really, it was an interesting time because you were really on the cusp of some interesting things in the tech industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so 8 um, uh, was, yeah, more like an insurgency and kind of this like all new uh, experience. And 12, you know, we were the only game in town at that point. If you're in democratic politics, that's the big show. Uh, so we attracted a lot uh, uh, different set of people. Not that there weren't wonderful people there, it's just that the culture had a different spin to it. 
we weren't constantly being tested and constantly being asked if we're going to survive another week uh, and going through you know existential crisis after existential crisis. Uh, we instead had like an 18 month you know ride, and so you could, in a good sense, you could build for the long term. The tech could be uh, built with a lot more. Uh, of a notion of investment and then payoffs down the road instead of just constant emergencies. Um, and then kind of on the, on the negative side, uh, you know, there could be a little bit more, uh, you know, infighting, boundary creation, no, that's my turf. You know, you don't get time for that kind of stuff when you're thinking you're all going to lose your jobs in a week. Right. Um, and, you know, there, you had mentioned uh, to me offline that there was an interesting dynamic between civic tech, which was just getting its, you know, feet wet back then, and campaign, uh, and campaigns. So oh, yeah. tell me a little bit about that dynamic. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, the Obama campaign in 08 is sort of looked upon as this, you know, a turning point in tech in, uh, in politics. And I think that there's, you know, there's, that could be true in, in, in ways, um, but also the narrative is that, like, technology had been evolving to a point where it got accessible enough at lower, lower enough tiers that it could be useful for an organization that's that temporary and that, that large. Um, and along with that come the technologists who do that stuff for a living. So, you know, there were people involved well before and people well after, and I think that just happened to be the point where they, 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 there was enough circumstances joining up to create that critical mass where you've got lots of technologists and technology sort of, you know, spread enough amongst pe uh, enough people who are young enough to participate in, in, in a presidential election. You've got, uh, you know, cheap enough tech and, you know, enough cloud-based tech to do you know, hosted email services and whatnot to allow yourself to scale, um, and and you've got you know that that, that young enough candidate even that right. uh, that paid attention to it and thought it was interesting um, and not like a fool's errand because it's just the latest you know key, key piece of uh, uh, technology. Um, so all that came together in eight, and and that continued to evolve in twelve. I mean, and, and some of the tools that we were using in eight uh, were just kind of getting uh, traction as everyday you know occurrences. And by 12, they were like old-fashioned, boiler-plated, commoditized, and easy to find. Um, that was amazing to see. Like the, the stuff that we were kind of at, at the at the cusp up with, as far as you know, cheap terminals uh, or you know, VoIP deployments throughout the field. In, in in 12, instead of trying to hunt for the companies that did that, I just like you know, a little Google search. There's 15 to choose from. Pick the ones that seem to be the greatest, right. the finest. That's easy to find. Um, so it was it was amazing to see the shift. Yeah. In fact, I remember um, meeting some people from companies that I had never heard of that are sort of civic tech household names now. I remember meeting the MongoDB guys, and, you mm -hmm. know, all those guys. It was, it was really an interesting time. Yeah. Um, and I, you had mentioned uh, that it's, a, you used the word temporary, temporary jobs. What was it like integrating back into your company, the MIS department? <laughs> Uh, there is, is it a tough transition? Absolutely. Uh, there is a uh, long period of sort of uh, uh, depression that comes on the heels of, of uh, being involved in something that, that, that big of scale. Um, so as much as I think people should get involved in something that's all about like inspiration, um, I also think they should buffer what's going to happen afterwards. Because uh, you go, uh, so uh, work aside, you go from every moment of your day being completely and 100% consumed by a, a, a cause that is so much bigger than yourself and being surrounded by people doing the same and being carried and buoyed by that wave. And then suddenly, you're just in line at the grocery store and you're buying cereals and what could any of this possibly matter? <laughs> and that, that lasted for a good couple of months. Um, and then there was obviously just getting back into the swing of things with work. Um, that was actually, I'd say, easier in many ways because the, the training of working you know, uh, 18 to 20 hour days uh, makes working in regular industry pretty, pretty darn easy. You know, five, six o'clock rolls around and everybody starts rolling away, and you're like, what the heck? I mean, me and my uh, uh, Alberto, who's another guy from the, the OA race, he came to join MIS immediately afterwards. And uh, every night the office would sort of empty out, and it would just be him and I. Seven or eight o'clock would roll around, and one of us would look at the other and be like, what, what are we doing here? What just happened? Everyone's gone <laughs> home, and they're not crazy. Right. We're crazy. So that, that, that was also sort of uh, funny, but you know, easier because you're used to putting so much time that you know, people are just like, less, less is, less is more. Right. It's fine. So it's good advice for people who are, uh, who are actually in the throes of a, of a campaign to have that as a focus. We're coming up on another campaign. Do you mm -hmm. have any advice for folks who may be watching that may be interested in getting into a campaign? Sure. Uh, yeah. I, uh, so I mean, my story in 08, I think, is not uncommon. Uh, to, you know, volunteer until somebody gives you a job. If you stick around long enough and you're good at things, someone will eventually notice and show up and, and offer to pay you. Uh, hopefully it happens before you go broke. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I, I'd say uh, also work for the candidate you want to see. I mean, I was fortunate enough to go with a long shot candidate that happened to win, and that's that's great, and that won't happen for everybody. Um, but I'm certain if I had gone for something more about you know just winning for winning's sake, I wouldn't have felt very inspired to come back a second time. Um, and I, and I think so. It's 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 a much better time if you just if you leave with your heart. Terrific. That's great advice in yeah. any circumstance. Rajiv Chopra, president and founder of the MIS department and former CIO of the Obama for America campaign. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me.